Hello everyone, this hour on Verbling, the next in my Hot Topics series. This Hot Topic is all about something you might not have heard of, astro-tourism. So my question is, is darkness the new commodity? Is darkness something that we're willing to pay for? I think ultimately that's what this article is all about. We're going to read it. It's got some great vocabulary, and we're going to discuss it. So, let me just do a quick introduction, and we'll get started. Get my name on the board. There you go. My name's John Eric, and I'm your Verbling teacher for this hour. I'm an Americ teacher from New York, coming at you today from Lisbon, Portugal, to bring you this class. And by the way, if you click on that link in the chat window, it'll take you to my profile page, and there you can click follow and see me all my upcoming classes as well you can schedule a private tutoring class with me and i will <clears throat> create a personal learning plan to help you get to your specific goals as soon as possible do me a favor and just send me a message first so i can find time for you in my schedule okay <clears throat> My voice is going, and I haven't even started teaching. So that's a little bit about the topic, a little bit about me, and let's get started. Let's see if I can share my screen, and we will start the class. There you go. Hopefully everyone can see that. Uh, well, we're going to give everyone just a minute or two to come on in. We still have some people missing. Let me just say hello to everyone. So first, Mr. Jorgen, long time no see. How are yes, you? Hello. Hi again. Nice to see you again. And uh, let's see. We have Mikkel. Hello, Mikkel. How are you? Good morning. Hello. Good morning. I'm doing well. Very good. Okay. Very good. Couldn't be better. Couldn't be better, Mikkel. Could, could be better. Yeah. Couldn't be better. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't be better. <laughs> and uh, Albina. Still doing yoga? Hello, Albina, are you there? Uh-oh, I don't hear Albina. Uh-oh. Maybe we're having microphone problems. We'll come back to you in just a minute. Raphael, how are you today? Hello, Raphael? I'm pretty fine, thank you. It's a ah, lot of problems okay. of connection, but I am trying. Hmm. Maybe... Uh, Sometimes on Wednesdays there's uh, updates, so either the browser or Windows sometimes has to update on a Wednesday, just so you know. So you might have to restart, I don't know. Um, Albina looks like she's having connection problems too. Uh-oh. I've already asked Verbally to change the time because it seems like in the morning everyone's having trouble getting into the Hangout. So I want to teach in the afternoons but they haven't switched me. <laughs> okay, let's see if Albina is connected now. Hello, Albina. How's the connection now? Can you hear me? Uh-oh. Can you hear me? Uh, okay, well, I'll tell you what, Albina, when you get your microphone working, just say hello. And in the meantime, I think we're going to get started. So first of all, let's take a quick look at that graphic and the word. Hello, Albina? Hello, can you hear me, Sam? There we go. Welcome to class. Sam. <laughs> okay, now we can hear you. So first of all, my question in the beginning when I did the introduction was, is darkness the new commodity? What do you think astrotourism means. Let's start there before we do anything else. When you hear that word, what comes to mind? Astrotourism. Any ideas before we read? Could be... So sorry, go ahead. <laughs> okay, it's uh, tourism. It's something that people do for pleasure, not because they work. That's true. So that's the tourism part, something for pleasure. What else, Miko? No, I was thinking that could be more or less the same thing that some people do with birds 
or burden, but uh, to go to, to, to see a start. So, no. Mm -hmm. and, no. What was the first word? Some, what some people do with... Bur birds. Burden. No, that is a... Not bird. birding, but bird watching. Bird watching. No burden. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not that but, I know of. <laughs> but he, but he, here we use this, this word uh, to, 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 to explain that this kind of tourist to uh, offer to people that has special interest in to watch uh, birds. I know, but you shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you mean in, you mean in, in in Basque or Spanish? You say no, no, in, in Spanish. I think that's yeah. yeah in but but here, but here in Portugal, they they use all kinds of English words that are that we don't use. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know where they come from. Uh, or, or I don't know. Maybe it's British English, and I never heard of it. Yeah. But I don't think so. Birding. Uh, som sometimes we use this ing uh, the, at the end of the of the word. Right. Or, uh, we we were invented some some different words. Yeah. It, it's a good word. It just could mean many things. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe you're turning people into birds. I'm yeah. birding. Help! I'm turning into a bird. Uh, <laughs> The sport, as far as I know, is called bird watching. Bird watching, yeah. And you go okay. out there and you have your bird watching book and you make notes and you do different things. Uh, and you're a bird watcher. You're a bird watcher if you go bird watching. Okay. So, interesting idea. So, it's like bird watching, but for stars, yeah? Yeah. Sounds pretty good. Uh, hey, Raphael, what's that contraption? In, in the graphic, what's that guy doing? Did, what do we call that thing? Do you know? Here's a good key vocabulary word. Tell me how a many. Telescope. A telescope. It is. It is. Not could be. It is. It's a yeah. telescope. And uh, and let's see. Let's see if we can uh, say a few other vocabulary words that will be useful. So the man's looking through a telescope. And uh, does anyone know what the telescope is sitting on? Tripod. Does anyone... Say again? Tripod. Not tree, but try. Oh. See, so it's sitting on a tripod. Excellent. And he appears to be a tourist. <laughs> because he's got his... And also his... a regular man carry on a basketball, a basket shop to deliver... At the shop, but at the same time, in less than a minute, he could see all the stars by the telescope. Through but the telescope, right? Through. through the telescope. That's right, right, right. So he's like an everyday kind of guy, uh, mm -hmm. not just a specialist. You know, if you really want to see the stars, you'll, you'll read about this in just a moment. The best place on the planet Earth, does anyone know where it is? Little, little trivia question. Do you know where the... Uh, it's in Peru. It's in Peru. Where in Peru? Oh, Specifically. On uh, the mountains? In yeah. the mountains? Yeah. On the very top of the tallest mountain in Peru, where there's no... There's like uh, no... Or, or you can also go to Antarctica, too. That's a good place. <laughs> where there's basically no cloud cover, and very little perception or humid, uh, not perception, sorry. Uh, what's the word I'm trying to say? Precipitation. So there's nothing to interfere with, with your, uh, there's less atmosphere to interfere with the image. So very interesting. And they have a really big telescope with a really big mirror. So it has more definition, uh, maybe more than the Hubble telescope. Hubble's out there in space, but I think the one in Peru has a much bigger lens. Oh, that's another word we forgot. We had telescope, tri tri tripod, and lens. I forgot to say that. Um, so let's find out about this. My question is, is darkness the new commodity? I think this article has more to do with how we live in cities than just what we do for recreation. But recreation here is an interesting idea, too. So we'll talk a bit about that. Well, 
what is a person who studies the planets and stars called? What do you think? Albina? Want to try this one? Uh, mm -hmm. It should be uh, connected to astronomy, so something like astronomer. Mm -hmm. Astronomer is correct. Mm -hmm. Astronomer. Okay. And uh, what's the difference? This is for all of you between an astronomer and an astrologer. <laughs> These are different things. Astrologer is one man or woman who um, try to know what is happening in the future with <laughs> the astrology. Uh, it's a kind of um, wish, uh, wish or an um, astronomer is a scientist guy who, that try to understand what would happen in the universe about a scientific mode more than astrological. Yeah, maybe we can say an astrologer believes in fortune telling by looking at the stars because somehow you're supposed to see if, see if you're going to be successful or not or whatever. And you're right. So the astronomer is the scientist and the astrologer is the other thing, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. So the important it's important because you don't mix these things up because it could be confusing. Astronomer is the scientist who studies the stars. There's also other kinds of astronomers, like there's astrobiologists. There's all kinds of variations. Uh, astrophysicists, people who study particles out in deep space the relationship of particles on the big scale. Let's say a quick hello to Mr. Fernando. No, it's not Fernando, it's Roberto, sorry. Roberto, how are you? If I have, are you? Because I saw, I saw Fernandez, so I said Fernando. Yeah. Roberto, nice to have you. Hey, Roberto, let me ask you this question. How many stars can you see in your area on a clear night? If you want to go stargazing, how many stars can you see? Uh, not many because there are uh, too many lights. Uh huh. Where I forgot where where do you live? Madrid. In Madrid. So not too many. <laughs> I, I think that at night where I live, I can see basically. I can see I can see the constellation of Orion. I always recognize that, and I can see uh, Venus, uh, the evening star, very clearly. So I can see the moon, Venus, and if I look hard, I can see Orion, because it's very prominent. Do any of you know the constellations, by the way? Oh, I no, don't know. I don't know the constellations. No? Oh, you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> Orion is the one that's very visible, because you can see the three stars in, in a row, which form the belt of Orion. And, uh, and uh, another way part of the stars in the Orion is, is uh, called the Big Dipper in English. So you might hear people say the Big Dipper, which is like a big spoon. It looks like a spoon. But it's really the constellation of Orion, the Big Dipper. So if you hear that, now you know what they're talking about. Um, what about the rest of you? Let's look, look at question number three. Is there a lot of light pollution where the rest of you live? I think um, here in Spain, I think uh, there uh, isn't so much uh, light pollution. Mm -hmm. well, I think I, I, I don't understand so much about <laughs> this topic, but I think uh, there isn't so much po light pollution. Mm -hmm. Well, you're in Valencia, right? Yes, in the east. Right, right. So maybe you're in a better position <laughs> yeah. to, to look out in the night sky. <laughs> here, 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 where I live in Lisbon, it's you really don't see much. I don't know. In, in, in Portugal, you, well, in Portugal, you, yes, but not here in the in the city. It's oh, really okay. you can't see much. Uh, and what about the rest of you? Can you go stargazing from your window? Uh, I think in the countryside. Uh, so uh, yes, I don't live uh, close to a to a city, so. Uh, if the weather is okay, then I can uh, uh, watch stars, which I also do uh, a lot. Uh, I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're somewhere in Denmark, right? 
yes, I, I can actually on a good uh, on a good night with, when I uh, strain my eyes, I could actually uh, notice the Andromeda galaxy. Mm -hmm. So, how do you know it's Andromeda? <laughs> what because does it I know like? it's in the constellation of uh, the constellation uh, of Andromeda. Ah, I don't I know, know where that. I know where it is. I have star maps and so forth, so I know where to look and. Ah, excellent, excellent. And, and, and you can you can uh, you can notice it. It's just like a fuzzy. Uh, 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 it's not like a star, you know. It's a galaxy. Mm -hmm. You can just sense it if you look at if you look at the right direction and you, and you have good eyes and. Mm -hmm. Do you so, have good eyes? Wow, <laughs> perhaps a, a little above average. Uh, good. So, but anyway, the, the biggest problem is if the moon is is up. That is the the biggest uh, light pollution. Ah, uh, uh, right. Is. Yeah, that's true. Oh. Yes, that that happens here too. The moon is very bright, then it kind of drowns out the rest of the stars. Yeah, yes. that's a good yes. point. It has to be a moonless night. Um, by the way, good word. It looks fuzzy. Fuzzy, fuzzy. a little bit out of focus. It good word. Fuzzy. Yes. Uh, I I know that. Uh, I don't know about the rest of you, but I know that when I've gone into nature. I've spent time really in a wilderness area with like but really in a remote place. It has absolutely blown my mind how many stars you can see if you're in a really clear place. It just you can, you don't realize it when you're in the city. You know, you really have to go out in the middle of nowhere to see what it's really like and it for me it was like I had never seen that before. It was only when I was like 16 maybe the first time I really saw the night sky out in the middle of the uh, I was in the mountains near Canada on the on the west coast uh, on the almost on the border and you're not allowed to have any technology planes are not allowed to fly over the area it's completely remote and it's a protected area and uh, yeah it really makes an amazing impression on you so that's my experience well Let's find out a little bit about astrotourism and find out uh, if we think this is something that we should maybe promote because it's being done in one place. Maybe it's something that will catch on and we should try to uh, get it to catch on. I don't know. We'll, get, we'll find out your opinions in a moment. Let's go to... Oh, yeah, I forgot. Before we do anything, let's make sure these vocabulary words are clear. You don't have to match them up to the definitions, but I just want to make sure that you can pronounce them, and maybe we can do a quick definition if you know what they mean. Okay? So let's go around the room really quickly. Albina, the first word on the top left. Accessible. Mm -hmm. What might be accessible in this accessible. article, do you think? Ac accessible source of energy. Accessible source of energy. Mm, okay, very good. It works. Or maybe uh, that the telescopes mm -hmm, are accessible yes. if they put up one of these stargazing places. Absolutely. Good. Okay. And Jürgen, the next word below that? Uh, planetarium. Okay. Good. Do you know what that is? It's a building in a city where you can uh, see uh, where they have an artificial... Uh, 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 firm, firmament of stars mm -hmm. where they can where they move and so it's almost like being under open sky at night it's only in inside a building and it's artificial made of uh, rays of light that is projected on a on a I think ceiling or something that's and then, right uh, there's a teacher that uh, explains what they are watching and, and seeing and they are, you are sitting like in a cinema and looking upwards I never that, been in right. a planetarium, but uh, I know, I know, uh, I know uh, how they look. It's a building that is uh, like oval or round from the outside. So it's when you see a building like that, you might say, "Well, that's perhaps a planetarium." Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got a domed roof or yes, a domed dome. ceiling. And uh, by the way, uh, you can go to this link if you want to see the most famous uh, uh, planetarium guide. It's this guy. Uh, he works at a museum. He's an astrophysicist. But um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was running the planetarium at one point in New York. Uh, the, yeah, yeah, Hayden Planetarium.
but you can see him because he's on television all the time. Kind of like. Eric, may I ask a question? Yeah, go for the, it. The last part of planetarium, uh, Riom, what does that mean? Because they, it's also used in terrarium and aquarium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like, a, like, right? like a like a space for something, I guess. A space for. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I'd have to so, look up so the, the Latin actually root. means uh, a space for planets, planets, a, 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 a space for a space for watching planets. Okay. <laughs> uh, like aquarium is a, is a place for water and. Yeah, from a space for aqua, <laughs> from the Latin word for water. Yeah, I I have to look up the actual root. I, I don't know what the Latin root itself really means, but I mean that's the connotation. Here in Lisbon, there's an oceanarium, which is like an aquarium, but it it has such a diverse population that it's an oceanarium, not an aquarium. It's not just for water creatures; it's for the diversity of life in the ocean. It's a really big one, huge one, in fact. Um, like so, I think it's the biggest aquarium. In the world, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, uh, what else? Uh, readings. Uh, yeah. Okay. Jose, if we if we take readings, this is a little different than the normal reading you do in a book. If you take readings of something, what are you doing? For example, you might use some kind of an instrument to take reading. Mm -hmm. To take reading. Uh... Yeah, to take reading. Take reading. Have you heard that expression before? Uh, could be an, an, an. No, I don't hear uh, uh, this expression before. I think it could be an interpretation about something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can have. You can oh, have no. a. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. You can interpret something, and you do a different reading than other people. So yeah, that's one meaning. Yes. That's one meaning. Another meaning. But it 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 is in the this meaning, no? Uh, I don't remember the article which meaning it is. Yes. But ah, okay. But uh, what I wanted to say was another kind of reading is from an instrument. So, for example, it it could be a measurement. To take a reading could also be to measure something. To measure something, okay. It's another another meaning here. Another meaning, okay. Uh, what else do I want to say? Yeah. I think that's it for now. Okay, um, Mr. Miko, let's go to the fifth word. Fifth? That's no, not the fourth. One, two, three, four, five. Five, it's, five it's, and six, maybe. Is skirts. Uh, skirts. Okay, if you want to go over there, sure. I was counting differently, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Scarce. Do you know what that means? Skirts. No. I don't know. Scarce. It's not the same in Spanish? Like scarso or something like that? Uh, so very few. Uh, very few. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. for example, white rhinos are scarce. There's only one left in the, in the world. So not very many. Okay. And Rafael, what do you think about the... We skipped the fourth word because I was reading in a different order, but that's okay. Let's look at the fourth word on the top, Mr. Rafael. Be between oh. resource, between resource, resource and scarce. Between. Can you see that? A stargazing. Exactly. What is stargazing? People who try to observe the Not stars. People. Not people. No. Not people, because it's stargazing. So that means uh, it's a verb, verb yeah. right? The act to observe the star, Ex exactly. the stars. That's it. By telescope or by proper observation, trying to get information and to take measure about mm. what's happening in the universe. Could be. <laughs> Hope so. Uh, so gaze is another way to say look. Star gazing is looking at stars. Gazing means to look for a very long time. If someone is gazing at you on the metro or something, you should probably be concerned, right? <laughs> so, sorry, John. In this case, bird gazing? No. Bird watching. 
It's bird watching. I don't know why. We don't gaze at birds. We watch them. <laughs> I think I think it's because uh, stars don't move, and you can look at them for a very long time. Birds fly away, so you can't gaze at them because they're they're not stationary. I guess. Uh, Mikkel, what about the last word in the second row? The last one, dim. Dim. The opposite of? Clear. Or could be. Not clear, but right idea, but not, not, not clear. It's a better word. Um. Is, does dim mean a lot of light or a little light? It's, it's, it's speaking about light, not speaking about something that is not clear. It's about something, it's about light. So a lot or a little? Dark, no. Dark, yeah. Dim is yeah. like dark. So the opposite of bright. Bright and dim. And in your house, you can have a dimmer, which is a switch on your lights. You can have a dimmer, which allows you to control how bright or how dark uh, the light is in the room. A dimmer switch. Okay, so you can connect that to some everyday thing. You can put a dimmer. Uh, Mr. Roberto, we missed two words in the second row. Can you just say those two words, the uh, third and fourth word in the second row? Okay, observatory, auditorium. Mm -hmm. Observatory, with a Z. Observatory. Observatory. With a Z. Observatory. Observatory. Good. And we've got auditorium. What's the difference between those things, do you think? I think observatory is a, a place where you can you can observe <laughs> or see uh -huh. something. And right. auditorium is a, a, a place, a, a building where uh, people speak about a, a topic. Right. Auditory from listening and observing is seeing. So different purposes for different kinds of buildings. Uh, okay, I think we're all ready and to begin. Uh, let's skip that and go right to our first paragraph. So, why don't you continue, Mr. Roberto, with our first paragraph. Okay. Uh, and, and the title, too. Dark Future okay. for... A bright future uh, for dark sky sites as astrotourism grows in a pet. Careful with yeah. the ending. Astrotourism. Astrotourism. Good. And also appeal. Appeal. Very good, very good. Keep Jimmy, going. Uh, Jimmy Dower, uh, 12th April uh, 2015. Oh, that doesn't matter. Don't worry. <laughs> Just go right to the first paragraph. Yes, this was from uh, a little while ago. It's not that recent. Go for it. On top Good. of a hill. On the top of a hill, looking down on Netherlands' beautiful Kilder Water Reservoir, a group of people wait in a car park next to a strange wooden building. They are looking for darkness and this is Kilder Observatory, the center of Britain's latest industry, astrotourism. The people waiting outside are the lucky ones. Many more apply for a night of stargazing and the observatory, but members are strictly limited. Okay, very good. And by the way, just take a look at this word in the chat window. Say that word for me again. Sorry, but I don't see the chat window. Only the chat group. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what. One second. Okay. One second. Take a look at this word. Okay. A strange. Good, because you said strange before. So okay. that second time was good. Strange. Strange. Strange in the night. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Excellent. And Raphael, keep going. Paragraph two, please. Raphael. Hello, Raphael. Uh oh. Raphael yes. went out to get yes, a beer. Oh, okay. Well, number two, no? Yeah. Inside, under a dim light, the observatory's founder and lead astronomer, 
Gary Fields. I think it's Fields, Deliver. actually. I'm not sure, but I think it's Fields. It's spelled funny. It's either Fields or Fieldes. I'm not sure. But we're going to say Fields for today. Gary Fields. Fields. Gary Fields delivers a speech to his colleagues and volunteers. Volunteers. The team discuss, discuss, discusses discuss the prospect of seeing the northern light, but Fields is doubtful. Instead, they decide to use their powerful telescopes to observe Jupiter and Venus, and later to pick out stars such as Capella and Betelgeuse. This is uh, actually Beetlejuice in English. Beetlejuice. Like Beetle. the movie. Beetlejuice. An additional attraction in the appearance of the International Space Station. Okay, and just one more, one word I want you to repeat. Give me a second. Take a look at that word in the chat window. I cannot see the chat window. No one can see the chat window today. Oh, my God. Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. It's a little hard for me to switch back and forth, but give me a second. For some reason, it's a little hard to switch. What about that one? Can you see now? No, no, because I am in a different device. I can see. Ah, okay. So the word was doubtful. 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 Good, good. So remember, there's no B. It looks like B T, but the B is silent. Just that doubtful. So imagine it's D O U T F U L. Doubtful. 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 Excellent. Very good. Okay. By the way, if there's any questions about vocabulary, etc., ask at any time. Okay. We're going to discuss the article. I'm not going to really stop you until we get to the end. Nico, take it away for paragraph number three. Uh, what was the name? Fields. Fields. I think it's Fields. Fields. I think. Yeah. Fields 49 is at the forefront of the UK's growing astrotourism industry. The key moment for Northern Northern Berland. Oh, this came. one. This one's tricky. It's Northern, North Northumberland. North Northumberland. Northumberland came in 2013 when the entire national park about 1,500... No, 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 no. Remember, if you got four digits, it's two so and two. Fifteen... Hundred. Fifteen hundred the square 1500. kilometers in... Good. Fifteen hundred square kilometers in an area was awarded dark sky park status, the only one in England. Dark sky parks are rare. Mm -hmm. uh, that was short. Anyway, oh, actually, keep going. You're missing a sentence. The, uh, ah, the 2013 star could revealed that only 5% of the UK population can see more than 31 star on a clear night. Okay, good. And just take a look at... Eventually, I'll find a faster way to do this. Give me a second. It's really hard to copy and paste quickly. Okay, and this word one more time in the chat window. Re reveal. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Reveal. Reveal. So reveal. the second syllable is the stress. Reveal. Okay. Perfect. Okay. All right. So now we've got this thing called the dark sky movement. So make a mental note of that. We're going to come back to it in a second. Mr. Jose, number four, please. See where we are, Jose? Yes. The Arizona uh, Based International Dark Sky Association, IDA, awards the status of dark sky park only to places that take major steps to avoid light pol pollution. And those areas must also prove their night skies are dark enough. In Northumberland Dark Sky Park, as the 
area was renamed it is so dark that Venus casts a shadow on the earth. It's so dark that Venus casts a shadow on the earth. Wow. I guess that's dark. <laughs> you normally you can see the shadow of the moon, but we don't normally think of Venus casting a shadow on the earth. So try to picture that in your mind for a moment. Okay. The Arizona based Dark Sky International Awards Oh the sorry. The Arizona based Dark Sky International Association awards the status of Dark Sky Park. So this is the place that recognizes the dark sky status. Strange it's in Arizona. I mean, not strange. Arizona is in the middle of nowhere. But strange that it's awarding that to a UK destination, right? Because isn't it, isn't it in the UK that they're talking about, if I'm not mistaken? Um, Mr. Jürgen, can you yes. take it away? Paragraph 5, please. Yes. Duncan Wise, Visitor Development Officer for the Northumberland National Park Authority, helped to lead the campaign for dark sky status. We tend to look at landscapes as everything up to the horizon, Wise said. But what about what's above it? Wise and others spent years preparing their application to the IDA, collecting thousands of light readings and producing an exterior lighting master plan that influences the construction of new developments in the area. Okay, excellent. So here we have that word reading, and we can see it, um, a, a light, collecting thousands of light readings, because earlier we said there's two ways to use that word reading. So just, Jürgen, what do you think they're doing if they're collecting light readings? What are they collecting exactly? Uh, they're measuring the, the wavelengths wavelength and, uh, and the strength of, uh, of light. They're making a, a diagram. With the with the curve, so you can see the, the so so much light in that uh, wavelength area, that wavelength uh, zone, so they can make a prediction of uh, uh, what uh, the source of the light waves are, because different uh, chemicals and uh, they sense out different light waves. So you can, uh, for well, example, if you let me just interrupt for a second. Yes. Um, in this case, I agree with you that they're try that they're collecting. The, they're, 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 they're measuring the light. I agree. But I don't think it's to do anything scientific yet. Okay. Okay. I think that here, they're trying to see if how much light pollution is in the area. So yes. they're right. So they're collecting lots and lots of light readings, measuring the light to see if it's being. Remember the term I used earlier? If it's being drowned out by city lights. Yes, uh, it's also the, uh, the, uh, what the atmosphere consists of, if, if it's uh, very that moist. Too, yeah. uh, that's that's uh, it too, yeah. General, general pollution uh, also can, uh, I think uh, general pollution, chemical pollution also can, can uh, affect light. Exactly, yeah. So yeah, let's see if there's good atmospheric conditions to be able to make an observation. If there's too much moisture uh, or too much, too much um, you know, cloud cover, it would be very difficult. Okay, very good. So now we know a little bit better about how the dark sky status is awarded and how difficult it is to get it. So it sounds like it's a lot of work. Um, Albina, can you take number six for us? Their efforts have been rewarded. Many of the one and a half million who visit North Umberland each year are now aware of its dark sky status. We get a lot of people coming here to see the sky now, says the man at the car hire from us uh, home in Newcastle. They come in autumn and winter, when it is darkest. It is good for the local hotels because they get business all year round now. Local hotels now give guests night vision torches and put out deck chairs at night. Night vision torches. Hmm. What do you think that is? Some kind of uh, flashlight. Some kind of flashlight. Because a torch is a flashlight. Yeah. And night vision. That's something very specific. I don't know if you know what that is. No, I don't know. Can anyone help out? What is night vision? Well, uh, it's, uh, it's like infrared vision. 
Mm. You said thermal, thermal vision. Yeah. So you can, you can see things that uh, give uh, give up heat, give uh, heat, heat sense uh, sense uh, wavelengths out that you cannot see with the visible eyes, but uh, but uh, using uh, a night vision you can you can see it. Mm, that's it. Yeah. So it's like they also use it in 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 uh, to to uh, see if a house needs to be isolated. So on a on a, a thermal image they can see like if uh, the heat is uh, coming out of the ceiling or or the windows or so forth because there are different colors. So you can see where light uh, where the warm uh, is uh, is emanating. Yeah, absolutely. I I don't know I don't know if it's if it's thermal though. I think there's there might be different kinds because. Normally, with night vision, it has this green and white image. It's like a, and it, and, it <clears throat> and there's no darkness at all. But I don't know if it's infrared or another wavelength. But anyway, it's the basic idea. Also, night vision is a natural thing in everybody's eyes. When the lights are turned out, you you your your body produces a chemical which shifts your vision from the rods to the cones or the cones to the rods I don't know you know the different kinds of receptors in your eyes the real things and one one is better for night but it doesn't see color very well and one is better for bright light and it sees it represents color better so when that chemical has to build up it takes a few seconds that's why we say our eyes adjust to the darkness so we also have a natural night vision so there might be more than one meaning for night vision. Here, it's what Jorgen said, that infrared or other kind of viewer that pierces the darkness. Okay, very good. And let me just, yeah, okay, we got 10 paragraphs all together. Okay, let's go back to Mr. Roberto for seven, please. Okay, why agrees that North Amberland needs to do more to take advantage of its scarce resources? He believes the region needs a couple more observatory to ensure that visitors will see uh, what they came for. A new 14 million pounds National Landscape Discovery Centre will have an observatory when it is completed in a couple of years. Okay, very good. 14 million pounds. You don't have to pluralize. 14 million pounds. Okay, 14 million pounds. That's right. So, uh, whenever we have big figures like that, it, the pound, dollar, euro, etc., is always in the singular, for some reason, because I guess it's not. It's more like an adjective or something like that. Fourteen million pound, adjective, describing uh, the center. What kind of center? Fourteen million pound, blah 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 center. Okay, very good. And Raphael, can you do eight for us? Uh oh, Raphael is sleeping. <laughs> we'll come back to you. So, Miko, could you do eight for us? Files had, has big ambitions. He's planning Britain first Astro Village, one that will contain the largest, largest. Public, largest public observatory in the world. I have a, a hundred seat auditorium. Uh, uh, a hundred seat planetarium, a one meter aperture telescope, and radio magnetic and solar telescopes. The multi million pound project would also have a hotel and draw in 100,000 people mm -hmm. a year, four times the number currently able to use the observatory. Five beliefs. The Astro Village will be a reality by 2018. Good. And just say that word again in the chat window. Ambition. 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 Yeah. Because it's not O like ambition. Ambition. But it's, but it's a. Ambition. 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 Okay. Very good. Thanks. And second to last paragraph, Jose, number nine. Jose? Yes. Number nine, please. Okay. However, uh, Northumberland has competition. 
Galloway Forest Park in Esconda, in Scotland also has dark sky park status since Exmoor was designated Europe's first international dark sky reserve. reserve. Uh, one level below dark sky park in in two thousand eleven, a range of local business offering stargazing bricks and safaris has sprung up. The UK has a long way to go to rival northern uh, northern Chile, 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 which has more than a dozen tourist observatories and some of the clearest skies in the world. The Teide National Park in Tenerife is also becoming a major astrotourism destination. Is that, is that the end? Yeah. Okay. Good. And just say this word again in the chat window. Is the end. Um, See the word in the, the chat window? The signate. Mm. The signate. There's, no, there's no E. That symbol is an E. Eh. The. Not, not the, the. The. The signet. Okay. But also. The signet. Wait, wait, wait. Jose. Yes. No, notice that the asterisk. The. The, what's it called? The apostrophe is before the D. Can you see that little apostrophe right before yes. the letter D? That means it's the stressed syllable on the first syllable. Ah, okay. Design it. Design it. Almost. So the mistake, the only mistake you're making is that uh, that that I symbol in English in the IPA is pronounced like an I, like an I. Eh. So not designate, but des designate. Designate. Okay. Good. Designate. Good. Designate. Okay. So you can have designate and you can have designation as well. Okay. All right. And I think we're on to, uh, let's see. We're on to, well, uh, Albina. Can you do the last one for us, if you don't mind? Albina, are you there? Uh oh, I don't hear Albina. Okay, let's go to Jorgen. Jorgen, can you take number 10 for us? So, why do people want to look up into the night sky? The media have helped. TV presenters like Brian Cox have attracted a new generation of stargazers. Brian Cox has made astronomy accessible, says Wise. It is no longer seen as something just for professors with telescopes. Technology has also made astronomy more popular. Apps such as Stellarium now turn smartphones into pocket-sized planetariums. But Fidel believes that most importantly, people are starting to appreciate what lies above. If you had, had to build a visitor attraction from scratch, what would be better than the universe? <laughs> there you go. What would be better than the universe? Uh, OK, very good, very good. So listen. What do you think about the dark skies movement, class, out of curiosity? What's your opinion about this? Is this something that uh, should be happening everywhere? Do you have something like this in your country? Do you think it's fair that Arizona is the place that decides where dark skies are? <laughs> I find that a little bit strange. So what's your opinion in general after having read the article? That it's very interesting that it, I, and I feel that here I live in a city we have very bad conditions to see stars. I can I can remember some years ago I went to New Zealand and especially in the South Island the South I Island, sorry. Right. That the conditions were oh, amazing. It's something and and we were in the south hemisphere, so the sky was totally different. We we, we saw there some other constellation, not the constellation that right, we can right, see right. here. It's just and the moon was different too. But you know that when the, the when you are in the north hemisphere, the, the when the, the moon is growing, mm -hmm. uh, it it is uh, like a sea, but just in the other position. But in the south hemisphere, it's in the right position, like a, a sea. 
So mm -hmm. uh, I think it was a very good experience for us to teach some things to the children, and and we realized that we that we live in a in so very bad conditions. No, that we have. To, I think that we are improving now. Right. We have so many lights in our city. We don't need it. We don't need them. We you don't to. you don't realize until you go to a place like that yes, just yes. how bad it is. It's yeah. true. Yeah. Um, and what do you think, Albina? Would you try to uh, promote a dark skies or, or an astro village where you live if you had the chance? Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Yes? Yeah. I think it's just business. Uh, and I'm a kind of disappointed after reading this article. I, I was thinking about traveling uh, to the space. And uh, <laughs> uh, it is uh, the usual behavior for human beings. First of all, they spoil the atmosphere. They spoil the earth. After that, they create something like, uh, like a place like this. And they make money from it. And maybe uh, because of, because of uh, my living, place of living, I live in a country uh, which is uh, surrounded by mountains. And, uh, right. the, uh, and it is not a very developed uh, country, so we don't have so much pollution. And we can see the sky and stars easily. Right, we, right, right. We have relatively clear, uh, clean air. And uh, so it is easy for me from out of my window to see sky, bright, bright sky and bright stars. So that is why maybe I don't understand this idea so because of it. Because I have everything in my life, always, without, uh, I, without charge. I, I didn't understand what stars were until mm -hmm. I was 16 and I went mm -hmm. to the mountains. I didn't understand. Yeah. I thought I knew mm -hmm. until I saw it with no, with no, you know, light pollution. And mm -hmm. it has a really, it's almost scary the first time mm -hmm. because I'd never seen anything like that, really. Mm -hmm. I grew up, mm -hmm. I grew up between Philadelphia and New York, two very big cities. And you and you can see nothing in the sky, almost nothing except the moon. <laughs> you should leave it to this If I may that? comment uh, on uh, uh, by by uh, promoting uh, star tourism, uh, astro tourism, you also uh, uh, change uh, watching stars f uh, from an individual experience to a collective experience because you have fellowship with uh, other people who are. Who are, who are traveling to these places. So it's an uh, opportunity to engage with other people. people yeah, yeah. Many watch the stars, they do it uh, on an individual basis. They may not have uh, have thought about joining an astronomical society in their local area, but but maybe the first time they, they, they are introduced to one is, uh, is, is uh, through an uh, event that is uh, uh, read an article in the paper, perhaps. In Denmark past, there is uh, there's sometimes uh, events uh, in the open area uh, where people can join. And that could be the first step into a, a community of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, amateur astronomers. Mm -hmm. So in that regard, it's also something that uh, sociologically can, uh, can mean something. Yeah, I think it's a really good point. Um, uh, so you have to sort of, you know, it takes a, if we want to change the world in any way, you have to change the culture. And uh, one of the surprising things for me is, uh, you know, I grew up in, the, in America. I never thought we'd have a black president. I didn't think it was possible because America, from my perspective, is a very racist place, at least from my experience when I was a kid. Uh, I, there are a lot of things that I wouldn't have expected to happen, uh, social issues, marriage equality, all of this stuff. But I think it happened because there was a, you know, a community built uh, that uh, started to communicate and then that spread. So if we want to have environmental issues dealt with, we need to build up that kind of social community as well. 
So what better way than something like this? So I, I like the idea a lot, what you're saying, Jürgen, because uh, it starts to build communities that care about the environment. It starts to matter to them. Because until you're with other people, you don't realize that your opinions are not just your own, that there's a group of people, like-minded people. So yeah, I think that's a really good point, a good reason to promote this kind of thing. And, uh, and Albina, maybe you could get your country designated as an astro country. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, why not? Why not? It's, it is a good idea, yeah. There you go. I mean, if this is yeah. a part of the tourist industry, the tourist industry yeah. makes a lot of money. What yeah. better way to get revenue than have people yeah. come to enjoy nature? Yes. Sounds like a good, sounds like a plan. Uh, let me just ask. Uh, so you've got a few activities that you can do. I'm not going to do them in class because we're running out of time. But don't forget that you've got great uh, activities here. I'm, I'm going to just focus on the discussion today, but don't forget that you can go specifically to okay. this, find the word on 11, noun and verb collocations. Okay, those are two more vocabulary activities that you should do on your own. Word building is really important. Try to find the noun version of these. I'll make sure that the answers are on the last page of the document, okay? Now, I just want to ask a general question to all of you. Are you interested in stargazing in general? Roberto, you've been kind of quiet. What about you? Do you think stargazing is an interesting thing to do? Uh, yes, I would like to, to go to a place where I can where I could, uh, see the, the sky. Okay, very good. Uh, and what about the rest of you? Are you interested in stargazing? Yes, I am interested in stargazing, but I don't have uh, so much time. Ah. <laughs> but uh, here in Valencia, there is a small village not so far away where you can observe the... the, the there is an observatory, oh, really? a, a, a semi-professional observatory, oh, where... Right. where uh, there are there are two telescopes, uh, not so much uh, larger uh, or, or powerful, but uh, you can observe the stars. Ah, so can anyone go there? No. Uh, yes, I think uh, some people go there, but uh, me, me, no, me, no, I don't, I don't go there. Uh -huh. so, but but the public is open to the public. Yes, yes, ah. it's open to the public. Really, really interesting. Yeah. And and what do you think, class? What do you think about going to a, this dark sky park, a park that is specifically about looking up? Mika, would you like to go to a dark sky park? Yes, I think it could be interesting. Interesting, but for me, it's not the. Um, I'm more interested in other things that uh, to see the, the 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 sky at night. That, but I think that it's something. This could be could be interesting. Now, for instance, we are going in July to Iceland, but mm -hmm. it's not a good place to 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 see the sky at night because it's all the days is bright. But but in winter, do you know that you can see this? Uh, how do you see this phenomenon? The winter the, or, uh, winter lights or the aurora borealis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. winter lights. So maybe one time when I we will go there but in winter time mm -hmm. to see it yeah. Yeah. some people also travel to see uh, the, the sun uh, covered by the moon uh, the sun eclipse eclipse uh, yeah yeah it's the daytime so that's also a kind of a, i don't know if you could call it astro tourism but but yeah kind daytime of. astro tourism kind of yeah because when that happens if you've ever seen a total eclipse it's creepy <laughs> <laughs> everything gets dark. It's hard to explain, but it just feels kind of weird. I mean, a total eclipse, like the one in Paris in 99. I was there for that, and it was really weird. Everything just got dark, and birds started making different kinds of noises like it was dusk, and then it went back to normal half an hour later. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of a strange experience. Well, listen, everyone. I've got to start the next class. Uh, I hope this was interesting. I yes, think the yeah. article 
Good, very good. The article is also great for vocabulary. So check out those other vocabulary exercises. I'll put the answers there. If they're not there, I can't remember if they're there. If I forget, send me a message and remind me, and I'll do it. And, uh, and well, that's it. Uh, I'm going to be back in just a moment for the second part of our Business Basics class, The Power of Introverts. One of the things we're going to do is decide how to reshape the workplace to uh, make it more comfortable for all kinds of people, which is, I think, what the article that we read is all about. So check that out in about a minute and a half, okay? Bye for now, everyone. See you bye soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye.